Uh, so my name is, again, is Stefan Hoyer. Um, I am a, a research scientist at the Climate Corporation. Um, I'm going to tell you about uh, a tool that we've built for working with multidimensional labeled arrays in data sets in Python. Um, so let me give a little bit of motivation. So this is the sort of data uh, that we work with. Um, we work with data that looks sort of uh, like a lot of uh, scientific data sets. We work with things like satellite images. Um, and, uh, and model output from uh, numerical weather models. Um, I work especially with, uh, with uh, weather and climate models. Um, so what's interesting about this data is that it's, uh, so these are big multidimensional arrays of data, uh, and there's, there's a lot of it. Um, so again, it's, it's, uh, it's typically numeric data, uh, like integers, floating point numbers. Um, it naturally has this multidimensional tensor structure um, that is common to a lot of scientific data sets. So you might, so in this example, I have a, a three-dimensional cube of data that would be, say, a single weather forecast, but we also might even have even more dimensions. It's easy to have three dimensions, or sort of four dimensions, or five dimensions even. Um, and the data also has a lot of labels. There's a lot of structure to this data, and um, so, for example, each of the axes has a name. I, am, I have a latitude dimension, a longitude dimension, a time dimension, and then each point along these axes also has a name, uh, or ha has, a, has a label associated with it. Um, and it's when we, uh, and so we have these labels, and um, uh, we'd like to have tools that can, can leverage these labels. Um, and uh, these data sets also have a lot of metadata. Um, and that's, uh, and especially for like the climate, the climate and weather data sets, um, or I guess really any scientific data sets, there's all, there's, it's always, it's great to have some place where you can uh, shove in a little bit of extra information that tells you about, say, the provenance of the data or the units for the data. Um, there, there's, a lot, a, there's a lot of extra uh, s stuff as well. Um, and the data sizes that we work with range sometimes with sort of small data, say, data that you can fit in memory, but oftentimes to sort of medium and really big data. So this is, uh, uh, so there, there are, um, I mean, uh, there are, uh, Climate data sets, for example, can easily scale into tens of gigabytes, hundreds of gigabytes, terabytes. Um, so we need tools that also scale, uh, ideally, to working with more data than uh, fits in memory. Um, so how, how do we analyze this data? Um, how do we uh, make, uh, derive insights from this data? Well, um, one of the, the standard tools to do this in Python is pandas. Um, and I'm sure many of you have, have tried pandas. Um, I won't have time to sort of do the full intro to pandas today. Um, but uh, pandas is a really great environment for doing data analysis. Um, it makes some data analysis tasks really easy. Um, and uh, at the root, there's, pandas has a, a notion of, of a data frame, which looks a lot like, on the surface, like something uh, you would find in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and it, it's a really nice way of organizing your data and sort of keeping together uh, all the different, uh, keeping together all of your different records for the data in, uh, even if across different variables and keeping it, keeping it well organized. Um, Pandas has, uh, makes really nice use of labels. Um, it has some powerful uh, uh, group by functionality. Um, it handles missing data and time series really well. Um, lots, of, lots of great features there that are really um, unsurpassed in the, uh, I think, in the scientific Python ecosystem. Um, and uh, it also is becoming one of these uh, foundational libraries that people are building upon. So there's a lot of libraries, for example, that can do plotting with, with, uh, with pandas, say, with something li like with like Seaborn or, or Boca. Um, so that's exciting. So we'd love to build these pandas, but it doesn't work that great for uh, these data sets because our data is fundamentally multidimensional. I don't want to lose that multidimensional tensor structure to my data. Um, pandas does have a, ha ha have a three-dimensional pa panel object. It doesn't, in practice, it doesn't work terribly well. It's not quite. The, it's not. It's not quite the right abstraction. Um, so this is my our motivation for uh, for X-ray. So X-ray is uh, was designed as a tool uh, to be like pandas, but for multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, and uh, fun, and we wanted to. So we, we reuse the pandas machinery. There's a lot of awesome things in in, uh, in pandas that gets that does really well, especially indexes, factorizing. Um, it's pandas is really fast. We want to build on that. And we also want to have a familiar API to people who know pandas. Uh, so the AP API is, is, uh, is uh, based on pandas, and co we copy a lot of their design decisions. Um, the data model we use is different, though, um, and that's because we want the multidimensional arrays. And we base it on a data model from the, the Earth science community, 
the, that's found in the netcdf file format. Um, so we, we are we are motivated by these sort of I'm directly motivated by the weather and climate use cases. But the goal here is really to build a uh, a domain agnostic tool that uh, can be used across a uh, across a variety of scientific disciplines. Um, so build sort of generic data analysis tools for multi-dimensional uh, multi-dimensional arrays. So we have um, uh, we have two data structures in X-ray. This is uh, similar to the, similar similar to the main data structures in Pandas. Uh, the first data structure is a multi-dimensional array structure called the a data array. Um, it's sort of like the multi-dimensional version of a pandas series. Um, so it's an n-dimensional array with a, with, with a single homogeneous data type. So pretty similar to what you would find in, a, in a, an NumPy array, except it has some extra metadata. And that metadata comes in the form of two types of labels. We have labeled axes, or, or dimension names, um, like, like say like the time axis. Um, and we have coordinate labels, which are tick labels along an axis. So for example, a particular date, like uh, July 6th, of 2015 it could be a, a daytime object that labels a particular a particular point al al along along the time dimension. Um, so that's the data array. We also have the data set, which is sort of like a, like like the our equivalent of the of the data frame object in multiple dimensions. And uh, this is a dictionary-like container of of the arrays. So this is um, uh, <coughs> So it's a set of arrays that have a, uh, some shared set of dimensions and shared coordinates. So I have, a, I have a bunch of data all in one coordinate system. I want to be able to analyze it uh, knowing that it's all aligned and on the same, um, and uh, ref ref referring to, it, so that knowing that it's all aligned together. Um, so what can we, uh, we, what does this look like? Well, so here, here's an example uh, data set from um, how, uh, how so, uh, some weather data might look. Um, we have a few weather variables here, like temperature and pressure. Um, these are, say, three-dimensional cubes. Um, I also have some uh, two-dimensional arrays here. Say, for example, say maybe describing uh, feature, uh, sort of other features like elevation or the land cover type. Um, and then I have my uh, my my uh, my coordinates here, which are uh, latitude, longitude, and time. Um, and so all this fits in a single extra data set. Even though they, they, all the arrays don't, they don't share all the same axes, but they share, uh, they, they share some of the same axes, um, and and they're all aligned along a, 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 along some subset of the three uh, of the three uh, uh, dimensions in space and time. Um, so if you print, if you load this data into X-ray and you print this out, you would get a representation that looks like this, um, that sh that lists out each of these each each of these variables. Um, it tells you which dimensions that uh, each variable go, uh, goes along. Um, it tells you, you know that each, each dimension has a fixed size between all the arrays. So the time dimension has like length 10 for each array in this data set that uses a time dimension. Um, and we also get a little bit of a preview of, uh, of, of some of the, the, of the, the data type and, and the values that are uh, 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 for, for each array. Okay, so what, what can we do with uh, with, with, with X-ray, with, with all these labels. So um, I guess the, the first example is indexing. So we can, this is like, uh, we can do indexing uh, like NumPy for just getting out the first few values. Um, we can also do indexing like, like pandas, where I want to select things out by label instead of selecting things out by position. Um, and then we can also do a new type of indexing where we specify, <coughs> uh, where we specify the dimension names. So I, I don't have to worry about whether my time dimension is first or last, or what, like what the ordering is. Um, I can just say take time and take to give me a particular time out along the time axis, or give me instead of having to know that the third dimension, the second dimension is longitude, the third dimension is uh, latitude. I can specify those, um, and this also gives us a hook, a place where we can also add in some special types of uh, indexing methods to do things like look up the, the nearest values um, if there's not an exact match. That's helpful for floating point numbers. Um, so we can do the standard sorts of computation that you would expect with these, these array objects. You can do sort of the math. Um, you can use uh, NumPy universal functions. Um, and then we can also do aggregation. And aggregation works with the labels. So I don't, again, I don't want to take, I don't want to do a sum over axis equals one. Um, I would like to do a sum, a sum over the, the time dimension. Um, and because we have these labels, we can use these we can use these meaningful labels in our code, which makes our code much more readable, sort of easier to understand, debug, um, all, all that great stuff. Um, 
We also make use of the labels to, um, uh, uh, in, in arithmetic for our broadcasting. So this is uh, based, on the, uh, based on the NumPy feature, um, where we have, uh, and in, in NumPy, the ordering of dimensions uh, depends on, uh, the way that, way that it, NumPy does not know how to add two arrays with a different size, because it doesn't have that metadata. Um, in X-ray, if you add an array with the time dimension and the space dimension, you get something with time and space. Um, so we can match things up by dimension name. Um, we can also do alignment based on labels. So if we have an array that has, uh, one array has data from 2000 to 2005, another array has data from, say, 2002 to 2008, we take the intersection of the, only the overlapping labels, and that's, what, that's the only place where we compute the values. Other, the other places uh, we actually don't really care about because they would all just be like a missing value anyways. Um, and we can also do uh, grouped operations. So this is similar, similar to pandas. We can do things like, say, calculate the average by calendar month and with a very, very succinct syntax, or resample my data set to, say, be uh, every 10 days instead of every day. Um, and that, 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 that's, that's pretty easy. Building, this is building on the pandas machinery. Um, and we can convert easily to NumPy and pandas back and forth. Um, so one other uh, a really exciting development recently with X-Ray is building on this library called uh, Dask. And so some of you may have seen the Dask talk yesterday. Dask is, a pro is another project that came out, that um, sort of came out of the Blaze projects or similar to the previous talk. Um, and it provides a really nice, uh, simple abstraction for uh, handling arrays that are too big to fit into memory. Uh, so here I have uh, loaded a whole bunch of data from, uh, from NetCDF files. Uh, and this is um, about uh, uncompressed. You can see at the bottom there, it's about it's 51 gigabytes of data. Um, that's more memory than sits on my laptop. Um, so I can load these into an extra data set and sort of pretend that, that, that it's data that I have in, in memory. And it's pretty, and it's, and it's uh, use all the extra machinery um, with that. Uh, all the labeled data machinery, so I might do some computations. Say I want, this is the difference between the, uh, the average dif difference between summer temperature and winter temperature on my, f my 50 gigabyte data set. Um, when I compute it, it doesn't, it's not, com when, I, when I calculate these first few expressions, it, they're really fast, it's, it's all lazy computation. And then when I, when I actually say I want to load the data, then it, uh, it, it will use all my cores and say on, on a single machine or potentially even, um, uh, potentially with a distributed backend for task as well. Um, and here you'll see that it used, uh, uh, about uh, three minutes of uh, CPU time, but only uh, 40 seconds of wall clock time. So that means that it was using, that was using all my four cores um, across the, uh, all stats, and obviously it wouldn't, also again, my laptop has 16 gigabytes of memory, so it wouldn't fit all in memory either. So that's, uh, that's pretty awesome that we're, we're able to leverage that. Um, and uh, in terms of how that actually works, um, we build a, uh, using, again, we use Dask as if it's sort of like NumPy, and we build, this, we build this computation graph. And then the Dask uh, provides an engine that, uh, to execute these graphs and takes every little task on here, every one of these, these nodes, and it will execute it on a different core. Um, so if you're curious about that, we have, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a blog post about this. It's on the, the Continuum blog. It's also on the, uh, uh, the climate, or climate engineering blog as well. Um, so that, uh, that, that, that is it. Um, thanks for your attention. Um, you can read more about uh, X-Ray on uh, Read the Docs or on GitHub. <laughs> yes? How are missing values implemented in X-Ray? And can you have missing values that your data? That's a great question. So the question was, how are missing values implemented in X-Ray? Um, and, and integer missing values. So we take the approach from Pandas. Um, so we will, we use uh, 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 not a number as a, a sentinel value for, uh, for missing values. And we, um, and that means that if you have integer, an integer array and you want to have missing values, it gets converted to float. It's not, not ideal, but it's kind of, the, it seems like the most workable solution um, in my experience. Uh, sure. Could you, uh, do you mean, so the question is, have I given any thought to supporting fancy indexing? Do you mean the, like the diagonal style indexing? Or do you, you mean like apply like a list of, 
So fancy indexing does actually work in X-ray. Uh, I mean like the pointwise style indexing. Pointwise style indexing. Yeah, so one thing we can't, we, we do a, sort of a simplified indexing model because we, to, to sort of keep track of, um, we need to keep track of all the labels. So the full generality of NumPy indexing we don't support currently. Um, one support case that would actually be really useful is, is pointwise indexing. That, um, in that uh, there's a GitHub issue about that and that's sort of on our to-do list, but we haven't, haven't gotten around to that yet. Uh, the question was, would this, the, my data was on disk, would this work with an open data set? And the answer is uh, yes. So we, uh, we use a few different, uh, a few different backends for handling, for loading, for loading data, and one of those backends supports open data. Or a couple of them, actually. Yeah. Great. So, um, so how, the question is, how much of pandas was I actually am I actually reusing? Um, so we use the the pandas index uh, directly, and so the that takes that makes doing things like alignment and, and indexing pretty straightforward. Um, some things we do redo. In some sense, our data model is uh, actually a little bit simpler than pandas because we have homogeneous arrays, um, and pandas does does some tricks to make things work efficiently with mixes of heterogeneous arrays. Um, so there's, uh, yes, uh, uh, some of it is re-implemented, um, and there are definitely a few rough corners. We don't, we don't go to the very long tail of like, uh, say, handling missing values well for daytime arrays, things like that. Great. Uh, another question? Yes, the question was, do we support the time indexing that Pandas supports? And the answer is yes. So that's, another, that's a case where I was really happy to be able to leverage uh, Pandas for that. So for all the time series stuff, we pretty much just call out to Pandas. So we can, you can supply a date like as a, as, a, as a string or anything that Pandas supports, and it will, uh, and it will give, you back, um, give you back the corresponding values. Uh, so the question was, how much sense would it make to expand pandas to um, to do these missing things? Uh, so it's one package, <coughs> and that's uh, that's definitely something that I, I've thought about. I'm also um, one of the I've become one of the core contributors to to pandas as well um, recently. Um, my sense is that uh, it it might make, make sense, but I wouldn't want to put this in a in, in the data frame. I think there's something to be said for having a simpler object that doesn't have the complexity of having, say, uh, all the multi-dimensional aspects. Um, and then the, uh, these days, um, we are relatively fortunate that we have good tools for, uh, that we have good tools for um, handling uh, different dependencies. Uh, X-Ray is pure Python, actually. Um, so it's not too terrible to install. So I, I don't think there's a lot of advantages to putting it in, into Pandas. Great, sorry. Uh, Else. Yes. Can it handle arrays of strings? Uh, yes, not terribly well, because uh, we rely on uh, on NumPy for that. We kind of take the pandas approach, which is that sometimes your string array will be will will use, will use a Python object D type for string arrays. Again, it's 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 pr it's, it's pretty awkward, but um, we sort of make do with the tools we have. Okay. Great. Thank you.